Hey guys, it's Tanya from my fancy design shop and today I'm going to go over my abstract watercolor stamp and brush set for Procreate. A quick rundown, um, it comes with 98 stamps and brushes. So they are all organized in four different sets. So the first set is all the brushes and mainly like the detail stamps that you can use. Um, all the round stamps, triangle and square which is also basically a rectangle as well. Um, so the main reason why I created this set is because I really loved abstract watercolor, but I wanted it to, I wanted to be able to do it in Procreate without having to draw the shapes each time. And I also wanted that watercolor texture with the water stains and the dark edging. So I decided to let me here I'll open up a new one so I decided to hand paint all of the shapes so what you will see is you'll have that um, watercolor texture and the dark and light and some water scenes to dark edging um, let me show you some more not all of them have that see this one has it and I also made ones that are just more of just like opaque like the darker. Um, I thought this was fun to add is, are we on there? Yeah. It's to kind of have like a composition already of um, the round shapes. So I'm gonna go over some of these brushes just to give you an idea of what this set includes. In the abstract brush, set right here you'll have the abstract filler brush the magic which is the same as this brush except it'll change automatically as you apply pressure so here is an example i'm just gonna pick um we'll pick a blue so the abstract filler brush is just like this as you this is light pressure and as you apply more pressure it's going to become a little bit darker this is great to, if you want to add in different colors, let's see, you can stamp on your brush or your round stamp or one of the stamps and you can alpha lock it and just pick a different color. Let's pick a pink and you're going to grab that filler brush and you can add in a color. And to blend it, you wanna to go to the sponge tool right up here and make sure you have that brush selected. And you're going to just kind of lately, I like to go in circles and then sometimes I'll just do like short light strokes just to get the blend. You kind of just gotta work with it. You can also work with the size of the brush and the opacity. Um, and then you can just kind of do it that way. Now with the, I'm gonna grab the blue again, with the magic, <laughs> magic, with the magic abstract brush, it's going to change color automatically as you apply pressure, a very subtle change. So this is going to be a light, and then as I apply more pressure, it's becoming a little bit more purple. So this is the same color that we used before for a pier, but see how we, light, light, and then as we're applying more pressure, it's becoming a darker. So that's just an easy way to um, get multiple colors without having to change colors all the time. So let me show you with, you know what, let me keep it on the same layer as this guy. I'm going to grab that same, no, no, because I'm on alpha lock, okay. I'm gonna grab that same one. I'm gonna alpha lock that again. And with the same color and the magic brush, I'm gonna color it in and I'm gonna show you how, you know. So light and then dark. And so you really don't necessarily need the smudge tool. You can, but do you see how like I'm adding a lot of pressure here so I got the darker color but then I'm going back over it a little with light pressure and it's kind of already blending on its own. 
Okay, next um, we have the Dark Edge Blender, which, and the Texture Stamp. You'll use them, I'll show you a little bit later, to add the dark edges and more texture to your design. The Glass Pen is good to add um, like those fun details. Um, if you wanna do like circles, um, stripes, things like that. So I just added that. It's just fun. It's my glass brush, so you'll see how it has that rough edge to it. Then you have the flat pen, which is also good for details. It's a little bit different than the glass brush, not as much of a jittery um, edging, and it's more of a square. So these are good to add like little dashes like this on top of your shapes. Um, you can even kind of just do circles. Then I have my glitter pen, which I included a palette. The trick with this pen is to use a darker color. So here I have like a dark brown and you'll get that gold. Same thing if you pick like a, a darker, I guess it's like a burnt orange. You'll get kind of like a rose gold. So that's the trick um, in using the glitter pen. Then we have the multicolor, or not, I'm sorry, the multi-line pen and the triple line pen. So with these, here's the trick. Sometimes you're gonna get like a weird beginning to it. If you're just doing lines, the best way to do is draw your line, keep your Apple Pencil on your canvas and it's gonna snap to shape. So you don't have that, those little, uh, I don't know what you wanna call them, in the beginning. Same thing if you're gonna go like this, snap it, it's gonna snap to shape. Do not let your Apple Pencil off the canvas and it's gonna be like that. Um, another trick is instead of like using a lot of pressure, you can go really light with your Apple Pencil and just kinda, and it's not as um, pronounced. Same thing with the triple line pen. You see how like it's kinda weird there what you would wanna do is just, let's see, I didn't even show it before when I tried it. Um, there you go, see, and then I'm gonna hold it. Same thing if you wanna do a circle. No, I let my pen up. It's gonna snap to shape, and you then, if you want a perfect circle, you as you have your Apple Pencil on your canvas still, with your other finger, just tap on it, and then you get a circle like that. Um, even if you want to do curves, those are always fun. And then do you see how you, when you left, when I lift up my pencil, I got that weird ending. So again, you can just go like this, hold it, and you get a curve. So sometimes um, you just have to do that. Another way is you can grab an eraser tool and just kind of erase it to get a more sharper edge. And then here are just fun detail stamps you can add on top of your main shapes. Um, so a lot of lines, um, little dots, and then I have splatter stamps, which are always fun. What I love to do with these, if I wanted more of like a metallic look um, and not just like a color, of course I'm using black right now. You can use a different color and you um, but if you wanted like a metallic look, here's the fun thing right here. It comes with, um, I believe seven metallic paper textures. Um, so what you can do is here, I'm going to grab the black and let's grab these spots here. I'm going to just make it a little bigger so you can see it. So I have my spots here. Say I wanted a metallic texture on top of it. I'm going to add the texture, all you would do is go to actions, insert a photo, and it should be in your photo gallery. And you wanna have it on top of your shape. Tap on the layer, hit clippy mask, and then you get instant glittery details. So that is super fun as well, and I really like using that. Next, what I'm gonna go over is the stamps and, and how to use them. So the main thing is you can use any color. If you know the color palette you wanna use, feel free to add the shapes with them. Um, so right now, I'm going to grab my Magnolia 
palette and I'm just going to pick um, a bunch of different shapes. The trick is to use different layers. This is so you can move them around easily. I'm going to show you in a little bit. So I'm going to grab just some colors. I'm going to stamp them on. Stamp my first shape. I'm going to add a layer. Let me delete some of these. And I'm going to keep picking new ones. Let's pick a triangle. I'm going to make that one. And um, let's pick a different color. Let's do blue. And then I'm going to add a new layer. Let's pick a square shape. Let's do this one. And I will pick, let's pick a pink. Okay, so we have those three. The reason why I have them on their own layers is because now you're able to move that around. If we had them all on the same layer, I would have been stuck with them layered and I would have to start over. So now I'm just going to move them around how I want them. Okay, so once you figure out your composition, you're going to see that some of the layers are overlapping and because they have watercolor features, it's going to be slightly transparent. So the easiest way to get rid of that is to just to get the layered look is to erase it. So the trick is to use a selection tool because if you don't then you feel like you have to be like super careful like and you're going to lose that. So here's the trick. You're going to open your layer menu. You're going to tap on your very top layer. Mine's going to be the round shape. I'm going to tap on it, hit select. You're going to see all these diagonal lines. That means it was selected. I'm going to go directly to my eraser tool. And right now, if you can see, it's I'm just using my glass pen. Then I'm going to go open my layers menu. I am going to tap on my pink rectangle because that's the area I want to erase. So I'm going to tap on that, close my menu, and I'm going to start erasing. So do you see how I'm already losing that um, the pink rectangle behind the circle? So I get a opaque look. Okay, and then you can hit that little uh, selection menu on the top. So now you have this nice, so now the circle is just more opaque and you won't get that overlapping look. I'm gonna do the same for these two shapes. Now, to take it a step further, see some of the shapes you'll have that dark edging, but what we can do now is add a little bit more and a little bit of a darker color to add some dimension. You can also color blend these if you want. You can just alpha lock it and then see if you wanted to add um, some yellow. This is when you can use your brushes on top of here. See if we use our magic brush and you can just add more color here and then go to your smudge tool and just grab that and just blend it in more or you can just use one color it's really up to you and your preference so I'm just going to finish blending this out and I'm going to show you how to do the watercolor edging and the texture okay so next I'm going to show you how to add the dark edging um, and the texture stamps so we're going to work on the circle first you're going to add a layer above it Tap on the end, this is the layer setting, and you're gonna all the way down to overlay. So now you have the O there. You're gonna tap on it again, you're gonna hit clipping mask, and you're gonna grab the color black, and then the dark edge blender. And you're going to go around your shape. And you see, because we chose black and overlay, it's already going to give you a darker color of um, your shape already. So you don't have to worry about picking different colors. Next, next you're going to grab your smudge tool, grab the dark edge blender again, and you're going to just blend it out a little bit. I like to go kind of like in circles and very lightly. And this is just gonna give it a little bit more dimension and make the transition a little bit smoother so you don't have that hard edge going into your shape, okay? 
Then you can go back, if you go grab your brush again, you can very lightly go over the edge again. And so do you see the difference? I'm gonna turn it off. So you have this, just your color, but by adding the clippy mask on top, you have instant dimension. So another um, way to add more texture is to add another clipping mask. Make sure you change that layer setting to overlay again. With the color black, you're gonna grab the texture stamp and all you're gonna do is stamp it on. And we have instant texture. So this is without and this is with. You can even duplicate it if you want more texture. So you have um, two layers of that texture stamp. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish out these two um, shapes and then we'll start adding details. Okay, so I added my dark edging, my highlights to the other two stamps and so this is what we have. Next, what we can do is add some details. So I'm going to add a new layer on top and what we can do is just add some ones here. You just want to just get creative. Try it. It's an abstract art, so kind of play around. Sometimes it's hard for me to <laughs> not think about patterns, so um, you kind of just got to let it go. And it's a really good form of art therapy, to be honest. Okay, so I'm going to add that. But what I want to do is I think I want some gold texture, so I'm going to... There is my gold paper texture that I had on before. I'm gonna hit clippy mask and then I have it on my um, triple line pen. Make sure this layer is selected and I'm going to hit the arrow tool. And then, I mean, you can use your Apple pencil with these little dots and size it down. I like to just use my two fingers and cause I feel like I have more control over it and just size it down and I can move it around um, so I think I want it kind of like that. Um, so I'm going to have that. I'm going to grab my glitter pen and try to get like a gold color. So on a new layer, and I'm just gonna kind of go like that. Just have be some more fun. And let's add maybe some splatters. Just going to pick black and oh, see I forgot to add it on a new layer on a new layer add my spots and put there and I think I want that gold texture again so the easiest way is I'm going to just duplicate this clipping mask but I'm going to move it and clipping mask again and I'm just going to move it down to my spots and there you go okay next to take it a step further, we want like a watercolor texture background. This is one of my favorite ones, I don't know if you can see. Um, it's not quite fitting around our, or on our canvas, so simple way is make sure that's highlighted. You wanna hit the arrow button and then hit fit to screen. And then a trick is you want it on a very, very top layer, but you're gonna change the layer setting to multiply and you're gonna see that paper texture pop right through your art. So thanks for hanging out with me today and checking out my abstract watercolor set for Procreate. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, here on YouTube or you can message me on Instagram at my fancy design shop. And yeah, if you have any questions, I don't hesitate to message me. I love to help you guys out. And if you are interested in this set, you can find all the links in the caption in my shops. So. Thank you again and um, happy creating.